Hello, Didier Stevens here, analyst at Enviso, with a second video on decrypting Cobalt Strike network traffic. In this video, we are going to use process memory to extract keys and decrypt traffic. In the first video, we used leaked private RSA keys to do the decryption. But if you don't have a leaked key, private RSA key, then you can work with the process memory of a beacon instance for which you have captured the, the traffic. And that's what we are going to do here. Now I have two examples, one for version 3 and one for version 4 of Cobalt Strike. There's a, a significant difference between the two versions when it comes to extracting keys from process memory. So, the tool to extract the key is CS extract key and we just give it the process memory dump of a running version 3 beacon and then it displays you all of the metadata which contains the raw key. So it searches for header 0000BEEF, it found one at this position and then there is metadata, unencrypted metadata following that header like the, the size, then the raw key. The AES key and HMAC key that are used to do the actual encryption are not contained in the metadata, but they are derived from the raw key. And that's why uh, there's a space here to say that AES key and HMAC key depend on the raw key. So it's actually the first half and the second half of the SHA-256 of this byte sequence. And then you can see more metadata like the version of Windows and IPv4, local host address, um, machine name, a uh, username. And also the AES key and HMAC key are also found in memory at these positions. That is important to understand this because that clearly uh, shows that we are dealing with a true positive hit for this header. While in the next uh, results we are dealing with false positives. Uh, if you look here at the fields you have just random data, you have no actual feeds and also the AES and HMAC key are not found in memory. So this is just a sequence 0000BEEF that was found in memory but it doesn't actually correspond to real metadata or maybe it can be real metadata but it has been corrupted. And the same for the, the third uh, output. Let's take a look. Let me run this again to have the data. So the 0000BEEF header was found here. So let's take a look at a hexadecimal editor where we have that process memory dump open. And let's go to this position. And here you can see indeed 0000 BEEF, the size, and then the raw key and the metadata. So this is the unencrypted metadata uh, that is encrypted and used as a, as a check-in. This metadata is uh, found in clear text in memory. Here we have the location of the AES key. Let me go to that location. And here you can see 32 bits that bytes, sorry, that make up the AES key. And this here happens to be the initialization vector, uh, which happens to be here just randomly. It happens to be right after the AES key, but it doesn't have to be so. It's actually so that the AES key and HMAC key in memory have no particular header or identifier. There is nothing actually to recognize them. They, they just look like random data. So that is for version 3. For version 4, unfortunately, you cannot find clear text metadata in the process memory dump because in version 4, that unencrypted data is stored on the stack through a, during a function call 
and as soon as that function call is done and another function is called the data gets overwritten huh? so you're very very unlikely to take a process memory dump at the right moment when the metadata is actually unencrypted in memory huh? so if we run this extract key on the process memory dump of version 4 beacon then nothing is found huh? but still it is possible to recover the keys by taking encrypted network traffic and trying to decrypt it with byte sequences of 32 bytes that we found in the process memory and if once a sequence like that is able to decrypt the data and also to verify the signature then we have found the AES and HMAC keys and that is something you can also do with CS extract key but first you need the encrypted data and that is something you can obtain with CS parse traffic that is the tool to parse and decrypt cobalt strike traffic and you can tell it that you don't know the key uh, option K unknown and then if you pass it a capture file it will extract for you encrypted data as we see here so here we have a response to a GET request encrypted data since this is a response to a GET request this here encrypted data are tasks send commands sent from the team server to the cobalt strike beacon and we can try to decrypt that with bytes that we find in process memory and the way to do that I select this hexadecimal string I copy it and then I use CS extract key I tell it that I have an encrypted task this is the data of the encrypted task and then I give it the process memory dump and then it will search for AES and HMAC keys and I already found some and here is the position of the AES key here is the position of the HMAC key with the values hmm. now it, this, you can have false positives here that it happens that you have a byte sequence that happens to look like it decrypts the data but it actually doesn't decrypt the data mm. and the way to distinguish that is that you also need an HMAC key so if you have a result here with an AES key but without an HMAC key then you are dealing with a false positive mm. now here you have the SHA-256 of the RAW key eh? we cannot find the, the RAW key in memory mm. uh, it's not found in memory because it has been overwritten but since we know the HMAC key and the AES key we know the SHA-256 of the RAW key eh? because the SHA-256 of the RAW key the first half that is the HMAC key and the second half that is the AES key now to do the decryption you take this complete sequence and you go back to CS parse traffic and instead of saying that you don't know the key you provide it here with the keys and then the tool does the decryption for you now you can see here in the command summary it's all data jitter and data jitter is just random data sent by the uh, team server to the cobalt strike beacon to make detection of the traffic harder and as you can see here we in the decryption we have a timestamp and each time we have data jitter now I use the tool here CS parse traffic that is a new tool if you go have a look in um, blog post 3 we use in this blog post we use CS parse HTTP traffic but you can use now CS parse traffic instead CS parse traffic is a more generic tool it supports HTTP, HTTPS and DNS while CS parse HTTP traffic we no longer maintain it it only, only supports HTTP and HTTPS not DNS